a failing African construction giant in need of rescue. Two British men tasked to save it. But they fail, leaving behind serious questions and allegations around how they ran the business. There was an intention to defraud creditors. Pure and simple. Ordinary workers came off worse. Staff were shouting, people just wanting to know how can they get away with what they have done. This is the end of my life, you know. There's nothing else I can do. I'm finished. My name is Amsoi. I'm a journalist for BBC Africa Eye and have been investigating the inside story of the controversial collapse of a once mighty Kenyan construction company. For almost four decades, Spencon's manpower and machines built everything from roads to waterworks across swathes of East Africa. At its peak, the farm employed 5,000 Africans. But Spencon's best years were well behind it. By early 2015, the company was crippled with debt and not winning enough new business. Spencon's owners, American private equity firm Emerging Capital Partners, or ECP, which inherited a debt-laden company when it took over the farm the year before, needed to turn things around. ECP gave the job of rescuing Spencon to two Englishmen, Stephen Haswell and Andrew Ross. Haswell, an accountant with experience of restructuring African businesses, would run the finances while Ross, an engineer and business director, was in overall charge. Ross was paid $30,000 a month, while Haswell earned $25,000. ECP wanted to sell the business by the end of 2016. With the business on the brink, the British boss's job was never going to be easy. The fate of the business and the livelihoods of hundreds of workers across East Africa lay in the British boss's hands. They're trying to revive the company, to make the company a profit-making company, that is. And uh, we thought they'll really make that company uh, what they were saying. But Ross and Haswell's plan turned to dust. Eighteen months later, Spencon was bust. I, I really enjoyed putting it on when I was working in Spencon. I knew uh, I was going to get some work done. It looks completely oversized now. Yeah, it is. Look at it. Is it bringing back memories? Yes. Good and bad memories. I feel bad. In a tough job market, Wycliffe failed to find new work. Penniless and in debt, the family were forced to move on to his parents' land. There's no electricity in this house. There is no water. My bedroom is here. Okay. I share that bed with my wife and my child. You know, it has really, it has really brought me down, like my, you know, my self-esteem. What happened to Wycliffe and his fellow Spencon workers might well have been forgotten, but we've been digging into Spencon's final 18 months. We've obtained a computer drive from the days Ross and Haswell were in charge. It contains thousands of leaked Spencon emails, messages and documents, which appear to reveal a disturbing pattern of highly questionable business practice. In April 2015, just a month into his job, Stephen Haswell is worried. I think we're going to lose this patient. We have four months of cash left. It's not looking good. Redundancies follow, and three months later, in July 2015, they move Spencon out of its smart central Nairobi headquarters into the company's out-of-town depot. To cut costs, we moved into prefabricated buildings in the My Engineering Workshop. But while driving down costs, the British bosses also start spending $70,000 on their own company cars. Andrew Ross had a Range Rover and Stephen Haswell had a uh, Volkswagen Touareg. It was a lavish uh, expenditure. 
Mr. Huswell told us the cars projected an image of an organization of substance rather than one close to insolvency. While Mr. Ross said the vehicles were deemed appropriate by the board, which included ECP representatives. Ross and Huswell also decided to mix business with pleasure and build a depot golf green. How cool is this? We'll have a chipping area, putting green, bunker and driving net. Nansin Tinu joined Spencon as its HR manager in January 2016, by which time the golf course was in full swing. Having a golf course for a company, so-called that is insolvent or on the verge of you know, financial distress, I mean, that just doesn't add up. It's a mockery for, you know, for Kenyans you know, and employees to watch this lawn being watered on a daily basis because these two gentlemen want to play golf. Mr. Ross and Mr. Huswell denied the golf green was for their sole use, saying it was for all employees to enjoy and said Spencon staff and equipment built the green at negligible cost. They added it projected a positive image of the business to potential purchasers. By the middle of 2015, Spencon needed cash and quickly, so it started a fire sale of assets, including selling off scrap and redundant machinery. Ross and Haswell hired this man, Tony Sangani, to do it. Highland did his own research on the new guy. When Tony came into the company, I looked his, his name on Google. You find his track record, his violence, criminality, Mike is right. You just type Tony Sangani's name into the internet. And you can see in these press reports from 2002, he is said to have been jailed with his brother for inciting violence. I asked Mike Highland if Rose and Haswell knew Sangani was a convicted criminal. I'm 100% certain they did. I also told Andrew Ross, you know, you were dealing with a criminal. What did he say? We have to do what we have to do. Mr. Ross and Mr. Haswell deny knowingly engaging a convicted criminal and suggest Mike Highland is not an impartial source. Mr. Ross says he'd never seen any evidence Mr. Sangani had a criminal past, that Mike Highland never told him Sangani was a criminal and denies saying, we have to do what we have to do. He states Mr. Sangani's appointment was approved by the board. ECP told us it was not involved in the hiring of Mr. Sangani. When Spencon went bust in November 2016, receiver Kabito Karamagi was brought in by Ugandan banks, which were owed more than $16 million to unravel Sangani's sales. So what we found instead is that they were gross, gross, undervaluation. Companies do sell assets as a normal course of business, but this was unusual. This was unusual. Sangani was paid $20,000 a month plus up to 25% commission. Equipment sale cash was also paid into his own account rather than Spencon's, says Karamagi. It smacks of fraud. The monies realized from this were not used to the proper business of the company. But they ended up on an individual's account. And then, we don't know what next. PwC, the international accounting firm, was appointed as Spencon's administrator. What happened to the money in Sangani's personal account? When PwC investigated, they discovered a huge financial black hole. At least $1.6 million had not been accounted for by the former executive directors. If PwC is saying it's 1.6, I'm saying it's more. Just by the cell. PwC did find some money had been paid to creditors, but crucially, not the Ugandan banks, which had agreed to asset sales in the expectation they would get the proceeds. There are also questions around the sale of Spencon assets in Kenya, and PwC have handed over files to Kenyan police. Ugandan police have told us they are working with Interpol to question Ross and Haswell. 
both men categorically deny any wrongdoing and say they are unaware of any criminal investigation. Africa Eye contacted Mr. Sangani, but he declined to respond. Mr. Haswell told us the equipment sale cash was deposited into Sangani's account to protect it from creditors who had dubious court orders to seize it. Both men deny any money is missing and say all funds received from Mr. Sangani's sales were accounted for, that the value of the equipment was overstated and banks were kept informed at all times. Mr. Ross said the transactions were recorded in the company accounts and approved by the board. ECP told us it had had no knowledge of these alleged actions by Mr. Sangani and no interest in having Spenkin's money deposited in other people's accounts. By the middle of 2016, the end game was approaching. Spencon was on its knees. I was literally crying every day because I couldn't believe the kind of situation I'd gotten myself into. Nancy claims by mid-2016, the financial situation was so bad, Rose would tell her who to pay and who not to pay. Take off this one, take off this one, take off this one. And I say, why? But we have to pay them. He said, no, 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 we are paying these ones first. When we get money, we'll pay the others. But he will always pay himself. Mr. Ross told Africa Eye decisions on wage payments were not taken in an arbitrary manner, that the lowest paid staff were always paid first, and that his own pay was delayed on several occasions. My marriage almost broke up because it reached a point that now my wife thought we are getting paid and I'm not, I'm not bringing home uh, money. Andrew Ross was at a Turkish golf resort when he signed Spencon's insolvency papers on November 3, 2016. After almost four decades in business, Spencon was gone. Not far behind were Ross and Haswell. We had one morning that they had boarded an aircraft and gone back to the UK. After handing over to the administrators, PwC, Ross and Haswell told us they had to flee Kenya because of threats. They say they continued to work on Spencon business unpaid for another four months. Have you heard from them since then? No, never heard from them. Never heard from them. Never. Yeah. Three and a half years on, both men are employed in senior positions with UK farms. I've worked overseas now for well over 35 years and I've never seen anything like the management style and management team of uh, Spencon, uh, the way Haswell and uh, Ross treated people and ran the business. Mr. Ross and Mr. Haswell told us they were proud of their time at Spencon, saying it was managed in a challenging business environment against a backdrop of inherited debt within the law and always with legal advice. They reject any allegations of wrongdoing. With Ross and Haswell gone, staff turned their anger on Spencon's owners, ECP, demanding they pay their wages. Wakely for Chiang spoke for many. As you can see these people, hmm? they have not paid their house rents for three months. We need our arrears, we need our arrears, uh, salaries, and our full and final dues. Hmm? We are tired of this company. Hmm? You look really angry. I was. Now, here, we are, we are heading to the golf course. In fact, we went there too, to destroy the, the golf course. Neither Wycliffe nor anyone else got their wages from ECP. ECP said the fund which was nearing the end of its planned life had neither the authority nor the resources to pay the outstanding salaries due to staff. Both Ross and Haswell were paid large amounts of money to rescue Spencon. Hundreds of trusting workers placed their faith in both men, but their failure to deliver a future, however hamstrung by a debt-ridden past, had a devastating impact. The question is, in trying to save the company, did they ride roughshod over normal business practice and the law? 
others may well be the judge of that.